Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. We welcome Christine Allison from A Chorus for a Cause. Good morning. Good morning, Susie. You are the founder of A Chorus for a Cause. First of all, what is it? A Chorus for a Cause. I started this back in 2009. Uh, at the, uh, the very first concert was actually put together to benefit the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. And there was a work called Sing for the Cure that I had wanted to do for, actually, <laughs> it was almost 11 years that mm -hmm. I wanted to do it. But my schedule just didn't permit uh, because of the job that I had at the time. And it was just uh, very time-consuming to put together uh, what I wanted to, uh, for this performance. The um, So you came up with that particular organization because of the Sing for a Cure? Yes. Um, Joseph Martin, the composer, uh, put together this extended work uh, called Sing for the Cure. And it's actually, so to, I'd say, prescribed that you have to donate the money to Susan G. Komen mm -hmm. Breast Cancer Foundation. That's so, just a great idea, not to interrupt you, but what a great idea for people who don't want to do the walk or, exactly, or yeah. the long, long hike. Right. Yeah. Taking advantage of different people's niche and whatever their happen to be their passion and their talents right. and gifts right. and use that to benefit cancer research. Exactly. And at the time I put flyers out and the newspapers helped and the radio stations and got the uh, word out that I was putting the, together this large choir. I wanted somewhere between 100 to 200 people and I got 110. Wow. And we uh, performed in September of 2009 with an all-volunteer orchestra as well and uh, it was uh, sold out at Umstadt Hall and uh, we raised over $12,000 wow. for the Susan G. Komen Foundation. And that was a first go. That was the first go. That's Didn't amazing. Didn't know that we were going to continue on at the time, although I kind of hoped. And I had singers that came up, um, you know, maybe the, a month before the performance and said, we're going to continue on s as mm. a choir, aren't we? And mm. uh, uh, out of the 110, 80 of the singers continued on with, with and we decided that the name of the chorus would be a chorus for a cause at the time when you first were putting this together first of all did you anticipate that kind of a response to have 110 singers i actually volunteer? had no idea <laughs> that's amazing because this isn't just a a mild commitment when you're going to be singing something and putting together an entire program, that, that's some practices. Right. You're talking right. about rehearsal We're time. We're talking uh, weekly two-hour rehearsals. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you worked together how many weeks to prepare for that first one? Oh, we started remember? on uh, June 10th wow. of that summer, and we performed the end of September. And um, St. Michael's Catholic Church gave us the rehearsal space. Mm. Uh, so everything just came together. Then the Kansas City Schools uh, donated Umstadt Hall for us to perform in. And uh, it was quite an exciting venture. That, that's so neat. I can see why you wanted to keep going. And when you work together for that many months, I can see why they'd want to stay together as a right. group and continue yeah. to get together. You and become sing. a family. When did you decide to decide on a different cause and make and not make it be Sing for the Cure every week, every year? Well, uh, when we first started, um, we kind of went with some of the more well-known causes like American Heart Association. Mm -hmm. um, um, but then it got to where we we were successful that we ended up needing a board of directors and the board decided um and i totally agreed that maybe we should benefit nonprofits locally the smaller nonprofits so nice. we've done um pegasus farm in hartville we've nice. done domestic violence project um so th there's a lot of uh, various ones uh, i think we've only repeated repeated one cause once and that was just recently we're going to be doing another one uh this i think it's in the spring actually no next year mm -hmm. um and it's the um 
Yeah. <laughs> I and it, wait and be the, surprised to right, hear. Right. <laughs> it's the baseball uh, for, for like Down syndrome. Oh, my gosh. I can't think what wonderful. the name of it is. But yes. uh, that'll be a repeated one. And they've been here, and it is uh, a special Olympics, per se, for students with Down exactly. syndrome who play baseball. And right. they are the greatest kids they and such are. a cool team. Yes. Yeah. Um, how very nice. So you've actually become... A foundation as yes, well, right? We're and we're a nonprofit organization, five hundred one c three. So, um, well, boy, you you started with wanting to sing, and you've ended up becoming a businesswoman and having exactly. to put together all these <laughs> kinds of extra little details, yes. like becoming a five hundred one c three. Fortunately, with the board of directors and some, the friends that have uh, come along with me, um, a lot of the business stuff that I really didn't know what to do with, uh, they are a big help. And mm-hmm. so, where did you get your singers? from all over. Um, At the time that we started, there were five or six counties uh, represented in that concert. Wow. Now we continue to sing with, I think we're still at four counties because one of the men that sings with us, he comes from Medina Mm. and he just loves our group. Wow. And he said, you can't keep me away. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And we've got one that's from Bolivar, um, most are from Stark County, but um, and I'm thinking 2009. Orange. This was before social media, kind of. I mean, it, it probably was around, but probably wasn't used as extensively yeah, the, as it is now. Yeah, we. Uh, I wasn't at least familiar with, uh, mm-hmm. you say, Facebook and that kind of thing back in at that time. So it was really pretty much done by um, friends and myself spending time putting up flyers all over the place. You know, we would just travel around. I I had never worked so hard, really. Yes. (laughs) Because I I like to sleep in in the morning, but I was up at 7 in the morning on the computer getting the word out there till midnight at night. Oh, my goodness. Well, now, as it continues... Do you, and you say you still have many of those original singers. Yes. Do you continue to add singers to the group? Do you have um, auditions? Yeah. How does a person join? Uh, we don't a- audition. I say if you love to sing and can hold a tune, <laughs> then you're welcome Anybody to can join, join us. So every concert, and yet you sound good. Well, thank you. Every concert that we have, um, we have s- uh, usually a few new ones that come in. Um, we have changed a lot over the years. Um, In what we ways? have a, a core group, but mm-hmm. but it's not the largest part of the group. Um, and it's kind of interesting that no matter, I mean, look how long it's been since 2009, and we still have about 80 singers. That is so cool. Yeah, it's eight years later. Yeah. That is amazing. How do you select your causes then? Is that where the board of directors comes in as well? Yes, um, on our website we have uh, a, a a link um, that that takes you to a um, be a sponsor, I guess it is, uh, and uh, people can non non profit organizations can apply to be a one of our causes. Nice, and then we have um, one of our board of directors uh, vets it, and then. Once she's through with the process that she goes through, then the board of directors hashes it all out and decides what causes will be next in line. Now, in the spring, we're going to benefit the Friends of Stark Parks. Oh, great. So I try to, in my concerts, I try to uh, put a theme around what the cause is going to be. So... We're kind of going with environmental or uh, maybe songs about walking or s- different things like that for the for that concert. So the music actually fits whatever cause you're I talking try about to, as well. Yes. Oh, that's so Some cool. of them are easier than others. Well, I can understand. <laughs> yeah, as I try and think of some of the causes, yeah, it'd be hard to come up with songs about some right. things. But We did a, a concert back uh, several years ago for... Um, a local Meals on Wheels. Oh, um, what did you sing? Oh, we did all about all food. Kind, yeah, it was all food <laughs> songs. Chili Caliente. Oh, and, my gosh, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but what was the hardest one to come up with music to go through? Hardest one. Well, gosh, let's see. Um, probably one like um, 
domestic violence yes. or yes. Uh, the dyslexia, um, ch- sure. Children's Dyslexia Center. Yes. Um, but that one I tried to go with lighthearted mm-hmm. music and maybe maybe some kid uh, themes, you know, that kind of thing. So, so. creative. That's so wonderful. Thank About you. how many concerts do you do every year so people can know, ooh, how many can we get our cause in there maybe Well, next we year? always do uh, a cause concert in the fall in September, and we usually do two, maybe three for that particular cause. It's mm-hmm. not just one concert. It's We'll, we'll do two or three. Uh, and then we always do one in the spring for another cause. Uh, our Christmas concert actually benefits a course for a cause. That, that's um, a cause as well, a legitimate right. cause. Uh, we have to keep going. <laughs> in order to, to, to do our mission, we need to uh, obviously uh, help ourselves some too. Because, well, the last two concerts were, were totally sponsored, so... Our causes got 100% of wow. all the money, the ticket money that mm-hmm. we brought in. But that would be be unusual, yes? I mean, it certainly it, had it costs been. some money to run an operation right, like right. this. And we would usually get a certain percentage of, of what was brought in. Um, but the last one, like I said, it was totally sponsored That's by awesome. either individuals or a company or or both, mm-hmm. and that provided us to uh, enabled us to give a hundred percent of the the uh, ticket money to the cause. Are your venues normally donated as Umstadt was that first time? Yes. Or are the, you having um, to pay for venues? Certainly, you have to pay for music rights. Um, actually, no? we purchase the music, and that's, that's great. No. Okay, we would have to d- pay for the rights if we were going to record and sell recordings but we haven't done a cd so Mm -hmm. um but uh the venues we almost always sing in churches uh because they donate their their facility to us um there's been a couple places that we have had to pay but but mostly we try to to go to churches that will um give it to us and that provides us the, uh, the um the chance to give all of the money instead of having to pay for right. the venue. Well, you keep your overhead low, and you do so much good work. We're speaking with Christine Allison. She's from A Chorus for a Cause. And the reason you're here today is because, yes, we want people to support uh, your upcoming choruses for a cause and and uh, I think a couple of other events as well what's coming up well we have uh, the Christmas concerts for a chorus for a cause uh, those dates are December 12th and December 16th the December 12th concert is at Westbrook Park United Methodist Church at 7 30 uh, it's a Tuesday evening it's um, Christmas is the only time that we we do a, a weekday concert. Usually it's just the weekends, but um, it's worked out well for us and uh, providing the weather cooperates, of oh, course. Let's hope it holds <laughs> up the way it's been. It's been amazing. Uh, right. <laughs> and then the December 16th concert is at St. Timothy's Episcopal Church in Maslin. And that one is at 3.30. Hmm. So that'll be a Saturday afternoon. Well, that is great for people who don't want to go out at night and for the non-dark drivers. Exactly. We do try to put one of our concerts, let's say we have two concerts on a weekend. Mm -hmm. We try to do one of them during the day just because there are a number of uh, particularly elderly people that want to come to our concerts, but they don't want to go out at night. So we've got December 12th at Westbrook at 730 and December 16th at St. Timothy's in Maslin at 330. Right. How do people get tickets? How much does it cost to attend? Actually, the Christmas concert is uh, free and we take That's just a That's a funny donation. fundraiser, Christine. <laughs> we just <laughs> pass the, the buckets, got actually. <laughs> we have festive looking buckets that uh, are passed and and um, so it's so it's by donation exactly and you make enough by people's generosity at this time of year to be able to keep going we yes. hope to there um, it, and generally speaking yes there was one year I want to say three or four years ago 
that uh, the weather did Ooh. not cooperate. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, everybody pray for really good weather and be sure to attend either on the 12th or the 16th. We need to take a short break. We'll be back with Christine Allison talking about a chorus for a cause after these words. You're listening to Our Community.